Not every SCP can be a winner. Take a look at some of the entries in the sandbox and understand that writing is a difficult and complicated craft. To make something interesting, well formatted, and compliant with an entire pre existing universe is a monumental task. So, of course, there are a bunch of writers just dicking around with the format and making dumb jokes. These aren't gonna make it into the mainline list of entries, but there's gotta be a place for all these joke entries to go, right? Enter J classification, the joke SCPs. These are entries that are just goofy, silly, nonsensical, or just plain stupid, made for the enjoyment of the community without being taken too seriously. Some of these jokes are as lasting as major entries, while some of these are just one-off gags created with the sole purpose of making a very niche group of people exhale out of their noses. It's fun for the whole family. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we're counting down the top 5 SCPs that are absolute jokes. Prepare your sides, they might just fly off. Before we get going, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more maniacal mockery. Outrageous! So what's the deal with airline food? Coming in at number 5, SCP-7475-J. Shark punchers, rejoice. Your hero has arrived. This is Turbo Shark Pulverizer 6000, the smiter of the deep sea. This heavily mutated humanoid was discovered roaming the Pacific Ocean, seeking out sharks to punch. Clocking in at over 2 meters with the ability to withstand insane water pressure, swim at over 80 clicks per hour, and secrete moistening fluid to survive on land, this is a mean, lean, shark punching machine. He claims to be the shark punching center's top agent, and nobody can really dispute that. 4475-J is constantly demanded to be provided with sharks to punch, is capable of punching at 85 kilograms per square centimeter while punching sharks, and indeed was originally discovered while, you guessed it, punching a shark. In fact, Turbo Shark Pulverizer 6000 refuses to engage in situations not involving sharks and is actually quite weak when not punching sharks. He's not very smart either, boasting an IQ of 65. This fiend is aggressively single minded and will often forget that things other than sharks exist. You would think that the threat level of a shark minded weirdo would be fairly low, but he's actually caused quite a deal of trouble while in containment. The first containment breach occurred because he was bored of waiting for a new shark to be delivered. Instead of biding his time, TSP 6000 requested a set of kids snorkeling gear with a shark motif. The mask was then forced on random passers by and once they looked sufficiently shark like, he would punch those folks in the face. Another containment breach involved punching people for apparently being part of a shark loving agenda despite not looking anything like sharks. This shark obsession ended up being 7475-J's downfall. A researcher offhandedly told him that he must be part shark based on his rough skin, grey coloring and underwater abilities. This sent the predator pummeler into a trance where he constantly punched himself in the face. He threw enough self inflicted blows to cause brain damage and amnesia. Now researchers are constantly reminding the shark puncher that he is part shark in order to keep him contained. There's a couple lines from the transcript that read, No, I have to punch the sharks. No 7475, you are the sharks. It's poetic. Coming in at number 4. Swinging in at number 4 we have SCP-2206. While not officially a Dash J entry, this one is funny and creative and out there enough to warrant a spot on the list. 2206 is an anomalous radio broadcast coming from another dimension, detailing the exploits of teams in the MLB. Not Major League Baseball mind you, but Maximum League Baseball. The broadcast can't be contained or stopped, so folks over at the foundation have started a disinformation campaign to make the public think it's a popular parody of the baseball culture they love so very very much. This has led to the creation of a fictional website, merchandise, advertisements, and the staging of live shows emulating the broadcasts. Honestly, I get it. I wouldn't be surprised if they updated to have a podcast too. The baseball being played in this league is noticeably different than the sport so widely enjoyed though. Batters can only advance if they hit the ball, no walks allowed. The playing field is larger and the fences around it are extra tall and strong to protect the audience from undue damage. On field fights are common if not expected and seen as a legitimate way of contesting a call. Injuries and fatalities are normal, and the use of performance enhancers is mandatory. This honestly sounds like a great way to ramp up interest in traditional baseball. Insane violence, mandatory juicing, imagine the possibilities. Every team in this league has a real world correspondent and they've all got some hilarious backstories behind them. The Boston Red Shirts hold the record for most fatalities in a single game, in which they lost their entire roster and had to draft spectators onto the team. 
They then won the bout 1-0. The Detroit Wolverines appear to have a few immortal teammates. The Houston Colt 45s are responsible for the 1972 ban on firearm use during gameplay. The list goes on and on. Coming in at number 3, SCP-729-J. Just, just leave it alone, okay? Nobody wants to be near this thing, just let it be. Fine, fine, I'll explain it to you. 729-J is a plushie made from the devil's couch stuffing. Not literally, but that is a line in the containment procedures. Everyone and everything is afraid to go near this thing. And it looks like a rabbit marshmallow peep. Even MTF New-7 Hammerdown refuses to approach it. The reign of terror began during a containment breach involving 106. The corrosive pocket dimension creating old man had cornered the good Dr. Hessen before it spotted 729-J and backed away slowly, never breaking line of sight. The entire time it kept both middle fingers up, which is completely understandable. Eventually it rematerialized in its containment chamber and remained there for quite some time. After this, 729-J had many run-ins with scary and dangerous SCPs, all of whom were paralyzed with fear. 2006 screeched and then turned into something resembling 729-J. It has not transformed since. When tossed into the 1322 wormhole, the plush yellow bunny was returned in under 6 minutes tied to a white flag. 303, the door demon, actually opened the door and quickly ushered the rabbit and the person holding it through. The only non-fear stricken person is Dr. Hessen herself, who claims it was just a normal plushie that she ordered online as a little gift to herself. Yeah, right. Tell us where you really got it. The factory, right? Coming in at number 2, SCP-049-J. You all know the Plague Doctor, now meet the Plague Fellow. Do you remember that painting of Jesus that got restored and ended up looking really Derpy? Yeah. This is basically 049, but restored to the same level of quality as that painting. 049-J is a humanoid entity wearing the period appropriate garb of a medieval plague doctor. If you look under its mask and robes, you'll find moss, wadded up tissue, and other smaller plague doctor masks. Most of the time, this one is compliant with the foundation, but for whatever reason, it'll often blatantly lie and sweat profusely. It claims to be a powerful magical doctor wizard capable of curing anything. It is unable to cure literally anything and usually just makes everything way worse. While not really anomalous, 049-J is really good at evading capture and escaping. He's a sneaky guy. The Foundation mostly keeps him around just to see what he does next. Maybe he will pull off some magic. He speaks like a buffoon trying to sound intelligent, and the interview log attached to the file is one of the most hilarious I can remember. Yes, hmm, quite very well, yes. I have the cure, good sir. Indubitably, yes, I am a doctor. Would you trust a man like that with your life? He was presented with a patient suffering from a sore throat. Quiz time! Did he A. Administer some sort of anti-inflammatory, B. Advise the patient to drink lots of water, or C. Beat them to death with a shoe? I'll let you draw your own conclusions. After claiming to smell pestilence and absolutely mutilating his patients, he'll often slip away unannounced. This is usually accomplished through a good bamboozling of any attending personnel. Hey look! More pestilence! See ya! And lastly at number one, we've got SCP-420-J. You know what it is. The good stuff. Yeah. This entry is basically an extended log of two extremely stoned researchers trying to write something that looks like a normal entry. Genius. They claim to have found some really good stuff back in Jamaica and brought it back to experiment on. The greenery is put through SCP-914 on the very fine setting, which made it very fine indeed. Once finished with the foliage, they then plant the remaining seeds in SCP-124 to make it grow faster, which works very well for them. The rest of the entry consists of them giving it to different SCPs and just seeing what happens, which quickly devolves into cheesy pot jokes about monsters. Hey man, what if we gave some of this to that freaky statue thing. Why, man? He's like already stoned. In my head, I'm picturing these guys as Shaggy and Scooby Doo, but in the form of Foundation researchers. There's an extended experiment log that makes me chuckle, and I'd highly recommend checking it out yourself. They think about giving it to 682, which then prompts fears about him getting the munchies. Seeing what happens if Bobble the Clown gets his grubby little clown fingers on it. And hell, they even give it to the cursed basketball DVR. This stuff is very anomalous if it can impart some intoxicating effects on the things without lungs. The last piece of the extended log is my favorite 
though, where somebody accidentally drops their uh, jazz cigarette on the steps in SCP-087. Somebody got a picture of what happened next, and I have to admit that I sat there with my head in my hands for a little while after seeing exactly what happened. Try explaining what makes this funny to somebody who isn't hopelessly immersed in SCP content. Don't do drugs, kids, and maybe avoid SCP addiction as well. So, did you chuckle? Have your eyes been opened to the wide world of dumb, jokey SCPs? Which joke SCP is your favorite? Should we do more of these? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more vivacious ones from the top five scariest SCP creatures that managed to escape. Part four. Kermit the Thought Slayer says, if I was on death row, I'd eat six pounds worth of bacon with a Diet Coke to watch my figure. Kermit, you, you'd eat bacon? What would Miss Piggy say? Archmage Zane says, I wonder how they keep SCP-1838 from places like the Super Bowl. It's my own personal canon that anomalies just really don't like football. I just, I can't explain it, but they just don't care for it. He'll stick around nearby, he's never going close to it. Justin Fleming says, my last meal would be myself. That's hardcore. Imprisoned for cannibalism, death by auto cannibalism. Goatboy12999 says, RIP Keegan's lunch. I. Really appreciate your support in this trying time. Appreciate your lunches while they're still here. You, you never really know what you got until it's gone. Joseph Vicker says, I have found a Yoda Pez dispenser during one of my walks in the woods. Can it be an SCP? Hmm, an SCP it can be if you write it. Just uh, be careful. Disney's corporate lawyers are always watching. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I try to enter Terabithia on a rainy day, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more humorous happenings. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hmm, an SCP it can be. <laughs> I can't do the Yoda voice, I'm sorry. <laughs>